welcome to Storytime for Kids. I'm Mrs. McCurley, and today we're going to read the final story, number seven, in The Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen. Oh, be sure to subscribe. Are you ready to get started? Story the seventh, what happened in the Snow Queen's palace, and what happened after that. The walls of the palace were of drifted snow, and the windows and doors of cutting wind. More than a hundred halls there were, all just as the snow had drifted. The largest were many miles long, and all were lit up with the bright northern lights. And they were vast, empty, cold, and shining. There was never any merrymaking there, never so much as a little dance for the bears. When the storms could play for them, and the polar bears walked about on their hind legs and showed their pretty manners. Never a nice little party to play slap in the mouth and wrap your paws. Never the least bit of a coffee party for the white fox. Empty, vast, cold it was in the halls of the Snow Queen. The northern lights sent up their flames with such accuracy that you could mark exactly where they were at their highest point and their lowest. In the midst of the endless, empty hall, there was a frozen lake. It had cracked into thousands of pieces, but each piece was so exactly similar to the next that it was like a conjuring trick. In the center of this, the Snow Queen would sit when she was at home and say that she was seated in the mirror of intellect and that it was the only one and the best in the whole world. Little Kay was quite blue with the cold, nay, almost black, but he didn't notice it, for the Snow Queen had kissed the shivers out of him, and his heart was practically a lump of ice he went about dragging a number of sharp-edged flat pieces of ice, which he was arranging in every possible pattern and trying to make something out of them. Just as you and I have little flat bits of wood and arrange them in patterns, a Chinese puzzle they call it. K2 went on making patterns of the most elaborate kind, the intellectual ice puzzle. To his thinking, these patterns were most remarkable and of the very greatest importance. This was the effect of the grain of glass that was stuck in his eye. He put together patterns to form a written word, but he never could succeed in putting out the exact word that he wanted, which was the word eternity. The Snow Queen had said, <laughs> if you can find me that pattern, you shall be your own master, <laughs> and I'll make you a present of the whole world, and a new pair of skates. But he couldn't manage it. Now, I'm going to whisk off to the hot countries, said the Snow Queen. I shall go and peep into the black pots. Those were the fiery knots, and the Vesuvius, they're called. I must whiten them a bit. That's my job. <laughs> and besides, it'll be good for the lemons and the vines. So off she flew, the Snow Queen, and Kay sat there all alone in the mile-long empty hall of ice and gazed at the bits of ice and thought and thought until he was all crackled. Stiff and still, he sat he would have thought he was frozen to death. It was at that moment that little Gerda walked into the palace through the great gate that was made of cutting wind. But she said her evening prayer, and at that the winds laid themselves down as it were to sleep, and she entered the vast, empty, cold hall. And there, she saw Kay and knew him 
and flew and caught him by the neck and clasped him close and cried, Kay, darling little Kay, so I found you at last. But there he sat, quite stiff and still and cold. Then little Gerda wept, hot tears which fell on his bosom and pierced through to his heart and thawed the lump of ice and consumed the little bit of glass that was there. He looked at her and she sang to him. The roses grow in the valley where we meet the Jesus child. Then Kay burst into weeping. He wept so that the grain of glass ran down out of his eye. And then he knew her and cried out in joy, Gerda, darling little Gerda, wherever have you been all this time? And where have I been? He looked about him. How cold it is here, how empty it is, and how big. And he held fast to Gerda, and she laughed and cried with joy. It was all so happy that the very bits of ice danced about for joy. <laughs> and when they were tired and lay down again, well, there they lay exactly in those letters, which the Snow Queen had said Kay must make up. And if he did, he should be his own master, and she would give him the whole world and a new pair of skates. And Gerda kissed his cheeks and they became rosy and she kissed his eyes and they shone like hers and she kissed his hands and his feet and he was well and sound the snow queen might come back as soon as she liked his release was there written in shining bits of ice they took each other by the hand and walked out of the great palace they talked of grandmother and of the roses on the roof. And wherever they went, the winds lay still, and the sun broke out. And when they reached the bush with the red berries, there stood the reindeer waiting for them. And he had another young doe with him, whose udder was full, and it gave the little ones its warm milk and kissed them on the mouth. Then the two carried Kay and Gerda first to the Finn woman, where they warmed themselves in the hot room and got directions for their journey home. And then to the lap woman, who had made new clothes for them and repaired Kay's sledge. The reindeer and the doe bounded along beside them and accompanied them to the boundary of their country. There, the first green leaves were peeping out. And there, they took leave of the reindeer and the lap woman. Goodbye, said everybody. And now the first little birds began to twitter. The forest had green buds on it, and out of it came riding on a fine horse, which Gerda recognized, for it had been harnessed to the gold coach, a young girl with a flaming red cap on her head and pistols at her side. <laughs> it was the little robber girl who had got tired of staying at home meant to go first northwards and then some other way if she didn't like it she knew gerda at once and gerda knew her and they were delighted you're a cheerful sort of old chap to trace up after she said to little Kay. i'd like to know if you're worth anyone's running to the other end of the world on your account <laughs> but gerda stroked her cheeks and asked after the prince and princess they've gone to travel and abroad said the robber girl. And the little crow? Ah, ah. Little Gerda asked. Ah, the crow's dead, she answered. Tame sweetheart's a widow. She goes about with a bit of black worsted on her leg. She keeps up a fearful whining about it, but it's all in my eye. But now, tell me how you got on and how you managed to get a hold of him. So Gerda and Kay both told her all the story. And snippity snap, Snur Bazaroo, said the robber girl, shook hands with them both, and promised that if ever she passed through their towns, she'd come up and pay them a visit. And then she rode off out into the wide world.
But Kay and Gerda went on, hand in hand, and as they went, beautiful spring was all about them with blossoms and greenery. The church bells rang out, and they saw the tall towers and the big town, the very one where they lived. And into it they came, and away to their grandmother's door, and up the stairs, and into the room where everything stood where it did before. And the clock was saying, tick, tick, and the hands turning round. But just as they passed through the door, they were aware that they were grown people. The roses in the gutter were flowering in at the open windows, and there were the little stools, and Kay and Gerda sat down on each of their own and held each other by the hand. They had forgotten the cold, empty splendor of the Snow Queen and her palace as if it were a dismal dream. <laughs> Grandmother was sitting there in God's bright sunshine and reading aloud from her Bible. Except ye become as little children, ye shall in no wise enter the kingdom of heaven. And Kate and Gerda looked into each other's eyes. And all at once, they understood the old hymn. The roses grow in the valley where we meet the Jesus child. And there they both sat, grown up and yet children children at heart, and it was summer, warm, delightful summer. And that is the end of the story of the Snow Queen. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and be sure and check us out on the next video. <laughs> and until then, happy story time!